Current Echo is a Japanese horror film that came out in 1968 that's written and directed by Kenito Shindo. So for this patron poll, I put some of my favorite blind recommendations that I've seen in our Discord server, which by the way, only five bucks a month and you will be granted access through Patreon. Now obviously, Current Echo won, even though it was up against some serious competition like Fat Girl, A Separation, and Border. And I was pretty happy that it won because this was a film that I obviously put in the patron poll for a reason because it's a film that I love quite a bit. And I have to give a quick shout out to Perry because this was Perry's blind recommendation in the Discord chat. And um, I obviously love the film and it gave me a reason to buy it on Criterion during one of the hauls. And since it won the poll, it gave me the excuse to finally open up the Criterion and pop that bad boy in and experience it once more. Because by the way, if you don't know already, I don't open up my Criterions unless I actually am planning to watch it. Just because I'm a huge nerd and I want to keep my copies of these films as sacred as possible for as long as possible. But yeah, Current Echo is a film that impressed me on so many different levels. Because it's essentially a simple ghost story, revenge story. And it was able to blend elements of pure horror and also surprisingly romance. Um, the romantic aspects of this film was something that I didn't really quite expect going into it, and I thought was incredibly effective and tragic at the same time, but beautifully captured stuff. And it's because it's through the direction and through its vision that was able to make this film an incredibly immersive and haunting experience, because as I said, the story itself and the premise is... Pretty simple stuff, but I was incredibly impressed at Kenito Shindo's ability to elevate such a simple story into something that was incredibly memorable and actually quite emotional and also surprisingly elegant because even in some of the revenge aspects that occur in the first act of this film, I know there's plenty of people that would find that just dark and really anxiety inducing. And it's definitely dark, but the way it captures the lighting and to the camera work and also combining these story elements that have to do with culture and folklore and incorporating this element of dance within one of these characters, um, I thought just the combination of all these things um, made something that had a sense of eloquence to it but also being able to maintain and emphasize that darkness and feeling of dread that, you know, horror fans come to love. And this is a film that starts off with a bang. Like, it takes no time to just cut right to the chase and give you something that's incredibly rough and uncomfortable to watch. Um, you know, it's not the most horrific and graphic thing that I've ever seen, but kind of just the way it's captured, it definitely pulls no punches. And, um... Definitely just a warning to people who can perhaps not handle that level of content. Um, it does start off pretty rough in terms of how it sets up the revenge element and the revenge premise. So just keep that in mind when you watch this film if you haven't seen it already. But that's one thing that I also did love about this film was that um, it didn't waste any time at all. And just It just cut right to the chase. But I can't stress enough how beautifully captured this film is. Because... This film, in terms of its direction, in terms of its cinematography, and honestly, even its score, and the way that it uses aesthetics to its advantage to capture a feeling and a mood and emphasize an atmosphere, while again, also elevating such a simple premise, um, feels incredibly timeless. Like, this is something I could tell highly influenced a lot of filmmakers after this point, because there's really not much about this film that feels dated. And again, that's huge thanks to just how dedicated Kenito Shindo was at capturing his vision. The only thing I can think of is perhaps some of the prop work and some of the editing choices feel a little bit 1960s. But other than that, the way that this film was captured feels incredibly timeless. And that's one of the biggest compliments that I can give a film. But one other thing about this film that I really loved was the fact that it was completely unafraid to criticize samurai and the ruling class. Um, in a way that makes him look absolutely disgusting. And that's something that I really appreciated out of this film because, you know, I'm not the biggest, you know, Japanese history expert, but I could only guess that it was a bit of a rarity 
to see a film depict samurai in critical ways that show them in a more embarrassing light or really anything less than noble. So it was quite refreshing for me to see a film, especially a film that was made in 1968, um, remind everybody that samurai weren't always these heroic figures that a lot of people think they are. And earlier I touched on the romantic aspect of this film, and the film starts to introduce the romantic element in the second act of this film. And again, the way it was captured was incredibly bittersweet because in one way it's romantically satisfying and beautiful but in another way once some more context starts to unravel um it gets a lot darker and a lot more tragic and i love that aspect of the film because again not only is this a horror film that obviously has this ominous atmosphere to it but there's this romance element to the film that kind of serves as an emotional core to the film that um I thought made the film a lot more of an emotional experience and as layers of complexity to the story and the characters. But what I will say about this film is that there's this exposition dump that happens when this film starts progressing into the third act. And I really wasn't a fan of it at all. It almost seemed during that moment that the film was being written and directed by a totally different person. Um, because even in the direction department during that scene, um, felt too theatrical and in terms of the writing was kind of lazy, um, for a film that was doing an incredible job aesthetically in terms of conveying its story elements and also emphasizing a dark atmosphere, we get that scene that, um, just came off both silly and just lazy in terms of writing because it was one line after the other that was just spoon feeding these story details and character details. Of course, it's revelational, so I can see why it structured itself that way. But for me, it just, it felt really out of place and didn't really match everything else that this film was capturing. But overall, this is still an incredibly stunning film. Um, there was so much more about this film that impressed me than disappointed me. So I'm going to give Kuraneko a strong 8 out of 10. Yeah, I found Kuraneko to be a beautifully haunting experience, and I'm really excited to see other works from Kenito Shindo. Um, I think the next two films that are on my watch list from him are Onibaba and The Naked Island, and I hear The Naked Island is a masterwork in visual storytelling, so I'm extremely excited to watch that one in particular. But... Either way, uh, those are my thoughts on Curran Echo. If you really enjoy what I had to say about the film, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.